How do insects breathe? Well, they don't actually use their mouths. Believe it or not, they have spiracles on the sides of their bodies that they use to exchange gases. So stay tuned because I'm gonna talk you through exactly what you need to know to get top marks in AQA A-level biology. Welcome to another episode of Mr. How Biology. We're talking about the insect tracheal system today. So what is the insect tracheal system? Well, this fascinating little system gives insects a large surface area to volume ratio, which is going to allow them to exchange gases at an optimal rate. The disadvantage of this, however, is that it also means they can lose water very quickly unless they have some of the adaptations that I'm going to talk to you about in a moment. Now, next, insects exchange gases using a tracheal system. So atmospheric air enters through holes in the side of them called spiracles. They then go down trachea and then finally through tracheoles where gas is exchanged in the fluid filled ends. So let's have a little look at how this gas is exchanged in more detail then. Well, insects have an internal network of tubes called tracheae. Rings of chitin, which is a type of protein, is the, the protein you'll find in the exoskeleton of insects give structure and support to the tracheae. The tracheae branch into smaller tracheoles. Think about like the bronchi in the lungs branching into smaller bronchioles or the arteries in the body branching into smaller arterioles. Now oxygen is delivered to respiring tissues and cells through the tracheoles. So here we can see a couple of examples of insects and these are spiracles on the side of them here and they can actually open up to allow the exchange of gases. So notice how the spiracles are closed. You can see them there. And this conserves water by preventing the release of gaseous water, AKA water vapor. Now they remind me a little bit of the stomata on a plant, which is controlled by guard cells. So this is the basic structure of the tracheal system then. Now at the top, we have the spiracle. Okay, that, which we've just seen on actual insects. We then have the trachea coming off it, and those rings around it represent the chitin, which is the structural protein. They then branch into smaller tracheoles, and the fluid-filled ends of those tracheoles will then lead to the muscle fibers where oxygen needs to be delivered and carbon dioxide needs to be removed. Here's another example of a tracheal system. So this is with a wasp. So you can see the spiracles on the side of its body there, and that'll go along trachea, to tracheoles, to fluid-filled ends, to deliver oxygen and remove carbon dioxide from the respiring tissues. So the three ways that gases can enter and leave the tracheal system are as follows. Number one, muscle contraction. So abdominal muscle contraction or rhythmic muscle contraction can squeeze the trachea, causing gas exchange. Number two, the fluid-filled ends. Well, here, during anaerobic respiration, lactate is produced similar to that pathway in humans this causes water to move from the trachea into the muscles causing a pressure gradient next of all we have a diffusion gradient so oxygen is used up by respiring tissues so there'll be a concentration gradient from oxygen in the atmospheric air to where it's needed in the respiring tissues and vice versa for carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is going to be produced during respiration so that's going to give a higher concentration of carbon dioxide where there's respiration taking place relative to the atmospheric air. So let's have a look how this can come up in the exam. So number one, using the diagram on the right, what causes the spiracles to open? Now we know in AQA A-level biology, they love to give you graphs like this. So let's make sense of it first of all. Well, at the top, we've got spiracle movements and it undulates between being closed with the line at the bottom and open with the line at the top. And there's a corresponding graph underneath it. So when the spiracles are closed, we can see the oxygen, which is the top line there, decreases and then plateaus. And when the spiracles open, the oxygen concentration increases in the trachea. And when it closes, it decreases, plateaus, opens, increases. Now we've got carbon dioxide at the very bottom. And we can see that when the spiracles are closed, carbon dioxide steadily increases. And when the spiracles are open, carbon dioxide decreases. So question two then 
is explain why the oxygen concentration falls during spiracle closure. And finally, question three, what is the advantage to insects that live in dry conditions of the spiracle pattern shown? So pause the video here, have a go at those questions, and then we'll dive into the answers. So answer for question one, what causes the spiracles to open? It's an increase in CO2. So we can see when the spiracles are closed, the CO2 steadily rises, and then it gets to a certain threshold when the spiracles open. So question two then, explain why the oxygen concentration falls during spiracle closure. Well, your first mark is for saying that oxygen is used during aerobic respiration. Second mark is that oxygen cannot enter the tracheae when the spiracles are closed. So that covers both points there for the AQA exam. Now, what is the advantage to insects that live in dry conditions of the spiracle pattern shown? Well, your first mark is for saying that the spiracles will not be open all the time. Second mark for saying, therefore, reducing water loss via diffusion. So short and sweet one there today, guys. I hope that helped you. Please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. And I will see you in the next one.